Welcome, thanks for joining me, astrologer Patrick Arundel, for the latest of my deep dive videos. Today I'm going to explore a very powerful celestial event, one which only occurs every 14 years. It's the unification of the planet of growth, Jupiter, with the planet of innovation, Uranus. The host is Taurus. It occurs across the 20th or 21st of April, depending on where you are, and at 21 degrees and 42 minutes. But I think it's important to just take a wider look at this because although the exact day and degree are important, and I've created event charts to share with you, which do give us some extra clues of what we can expect over these future years, but what about Uranus through Taurus? How has that had an influence? What was the event chart when Uranus moved into Taurus on the 15th of May 2018 for five months? There was something there which provides an enormous amount of illumination in terms of what we've experienced since then. Certainly with COVID, with industrial disputes, with wars, all of it is there. And that all feeds into the narrative now. Now, of course, a conjunction isn't necessarily all good or all bad. It's a unification of the two energies, and we have to take into account the host as well. So what are the positive things that we can look forward to over the next 14 years? And what could be some of the challenges? So I'm going to go through all of that with you, then share your zodiac sign forecast from the perspective of the ascendant, or the sun, or the moon, it's your choice. So please stay with me for that. If you're new to my channel, it's great to have your company. This is very much a community, share any thoughts you have. If you're a returning visitor, thank you so much for all your views and interactions. We have found that 55% of people who watch my videos are not subscribers. Please help this channel to grow by clicking that subscription button and also tapping or clicking on the bell notification symbol. Every time I drop a video, you'll get an alert. Also, why not take advantage of my free daily written horoscope? Fire to your device each morning. I've been writing these for near to 30 years. My work features in one of Britain's most read daily newspapers and websites the world over. Click on the link beneath this video and you can subscribe totally for free. I'm also a consultant astrologer. Please check out my testimonials by uh, clicking the link beneath this video. It's a great joy working with people, but see what people say. I don't edit these as they come in. I just put them on the website as is. So this event occurs at 21 degrees and 41 minutes across the 20th or 21st. And it's very close to a fixed star, a fixed star called Arana. Now this has a love of knowledge, which is interesting because Jupiter is very much about knowledge, but also science. Now Jupiter can be expansive and Uranus very much to do with new ideas. Also it's linked to travel. Again, Jupiter has a flavor of that, but has definitely got a sense of change. And that's something that we're all conscious that we're on or are involved in this huge shift of momentum about the way we live our lives. But that can be a fortunate fixed star and it's only about 26 minutes away from being exact. Now I mentioned the last time this occurred was in Aquarius in February 1997. The big thing that's changed since then is technology. Technology will have been developing at a pace, but certainly social technology, so how we all interact, that's the one that's really changed at an incredible rate of knots, so that's interesting. Now, the next one is in Cancer, which of course is very much to do with our home, our need for protection, security, uh, definitely stability, and how we connect to the more emotional level. So that's interesting. But let's look at some of the themes of Jupiter and Uranus. Now they're both the rulers of two freedom love in zodiac signs. In the case of Jupiter, it's Sagittarius. Jupiter also rules Pisces traditionally, much more to do with the spiritual domain and faith. But through the sign of 
Sagittarius, very much a lover of independence and freedom. And of course Uranus, the higher octave modern ruler of Aquarius, once more, like space. Don't crowd me, very much a Uranus uh, characteristic. Now Uranus first appeared, obviously when we construct birth charts now, that go beyond 1781, we do include Uranus. But Jupiter's been around, as we know, for a very long time. It's very much part of traditional astrology and it's known as the greater benefit. So very much to do with confidence, optimism, growth, expansion, wisdom, travel, the aforementioned freedom and independence, that good fortune, but it can also be to do with self-belief, philanthropy, history, culture, and in a more sort of worldly way, legislation. Now, I just thought of some of the perhaps more challenging sides of Jupiter, particularly through Sagittarius. It's more to do with dogmatism, bragging, exaggeration, boasting, a need to impose our thoughts or our belief system on somebody else. That can be a downside of Jupiter. Uranus is very much the truth seeker. It is actually in myth the ruler of the sky. Now I feel Uranus is very much linked to astrology. Other astrologers do have other opinions on that. Doesn't make me right and them wrong. That's just my sense of it. But Uranus is very much the freedom fighter and encourage us, us to get in touch with the most authentic side of ourselves. Um, yes, it can be very original and quirky in its approach and has a real appreciation of innovation and has a spark. There's an electricity that Uranus creates and that makes it exciting. But also it does, of course, have its more testing side, which can be very restless and changeable and a bit contrary, um, very outspoken, erratic, uh, argumentative likes to keep a bit of a distance and can be detached and also confrontational. What about the host Taurus? Taurus is the second zodiac sign. It's ruled by Venus. It has a great appreciation of stability. The first zodiac sign Aries is about initiation, getting things moving and off the ground. When we get to Taurus, we want to pause a little bit and make sure we get the foundations down. But also, it sees us tuned into our self-worth, our values, everyday money. Can be to do with food, sensuality. If you're someone who has, has a real appreciation of the arts and crafts, very Venusian, particularly if you enjoy earthy arts and crafts. Now this event occurs at 21 degrees, so therefore just into the third decan of the sign of Virgo, and that's sub ruled by Saturn. So as much as Jupiter and Uranus can be very fast moving, a very exciting combination. There's Saturn to provide some anchorage. So let's just consider the combination of Jupiter and Uranus. Whether it is in a conjunction or people enjoy its influence through the sextile, the trine, perhaps more challenging through the opposition, it does give a person uh, a confidence to express themselves in a unique way, which you know, it's something to really applaud. So it has a, a great comfort with originality and trying things in a fresh manner. So that's really lovely. But of course, Jupiter can be about faith and that faith won't always be shook. So it gives a sense of conviction. And of course, Jupiter can be very much about a belief that goes all the way to strong convictions. But people with this influence in their chart can often have a great intuition, a nose for opportunities. And the sign of Taurus can be about finance and business. Um, so good luck is definitely possible with this combination. So it's a very sparkling, uh, epiphescent combination, but perhaps in the sign of Taurus, it slows them down somewhat because of course, Taurus doesn't receive Uranus so well. It's in fall here. And the Taurus preference for continuity is fighting against Uranus's desire to rip things up and try something fresh and new. So on the screen now, I'm showing when Uranus moved into Taurus and it was on a Taurus new moon. Quite incredible. The moon had just gone past the sun when Uranus moved in 
and Uranus was in the seventh house based on Universal and Greenwich. The seventh house are related, but we also have Mercury very close to Uranus. Think about how relationships have changed over those last six years. There's much more emphasis on people being able to have their own original take on how they connect to others. But Mars, the planet of thrust and desire, is in the fourth house, very much influencing home and property. And of course, the property market really heated up over those intervening years. It's now gone into a much slower period. But that square between Mars, even though it's on the anoretic point, that uh, square between Mars and Uranus creates a lot of abrasion. So ever since then, I feel we have seen a lot of tension, particularly tension about where we live, how much it costs, but also how we connect to others. So that's been playing out through the whole of the last six years. Now the potentials between Jupiter and Uranus in a positive way are absolutely immense and I'm not going to be able to cover all of them. So I'm just gonna give you a few that just tumbled into my mind over the last few days. One thing that really delighted me in a world that does seem to be totally dominated by the pursuit of profit and no real concern for the consumer, however much the marketeers tell you it's all about the consumer, it's all about profit. The US Environmental Protection Agency has set legally enforceable drinking water limits in terms of PFAS compounds. Now, if you go back to that infamous uh, situation where a saucepan manufacturer in America that I cannot name uh, invented a particular process which is very very poisonous and that technology is still totally adopted by so many people as a way of cooking things um, and I wouldn't go near any of those pans nor any plastic utensils because all of these micro uh, chemicals and plastics are working their way into our systems and it, it really is disgusting so that's a great piece of news but also another way we can approach food production in a positive way is to think of vertical growing systems which use hydroponics so if you think about um, a square meter of land you can only get a certain amount of yield from that as the land is but if we go upwards and we have 20 shelves of produce being grown using water into them that could be a very efficient way of creating more food. Another idea that came up for me which I think is absolutely cracking we know that solar panels have become widely adopted by a lot of people on their roofs but what I saw recently is where you have essentially solar panels on the driveway so when your car's in the garage or at work the sun's beating down and the driveway absorbs the energy and then that's converted into power. That's fantastic. That's the type of technology we need to be embracing. Now, obviously AI, robotics, automation, it's a pretty scary concept in some ways, but there are going to be some upsides to that, particularly around health testing. Very skilled and experienced doctors can learn a lot, I feel, from talking to people just by looking at maybe their eyes, their skin, uh, the way they actually sit. All these things come from huge experience, but uh, obviously experienced people are always moving on and retiring. So I feel that there are going to be health tests developed that are more accurate, that can catch conditions sooner. And they can also approach things using less invasive methods. So that's absolutely fantastic. We're also going to see implants, I feel, that will help motor uh, diseases. So anything like motor neuron or Parkinson's. My mum had Parkinson's for a very long time. And it can be a very, very cruel disease. And you know, you get people like Michael J. Fox are very well known. He's been very brave and promoted the cause brilliantly. Illnesses and conditions like that can be hugely helped by implants. Now in terms of the event chart, I'm just going to share that with you. and. It just so happens that Jupiter and Uranus, based on Placidus and using Universal and Greenwich, is in the third house. Third house is lightning quick, which of course is a Uranus, uh, a Uranus characteristic. So fast changes in the mode of communication are really possible. 
and the sciences can expand in a constructive way, we will see things like Neuralink technology and also implantable vagus nerve stimulators for people who have issues with deep depression. Um, but there are also um, devices that we can aware and TENS machines that are all coming into play now in, in a really quick way, which can all be very, very helpful to us. But one of the things I think will develop, which I personally am not so keen on, is the whole idea of telepathy. And I think it's definitely going to be part of the, what the next 14 years will hold. So we'll be able to think something, uh, think to turn on the computer, and it will turn on the computer. What do you think? Share with me what you think personally. I don't think it's great. We're also obviously going to have some people with the money will have more access to more advanced technologies with surgeries, which will uh, expand their life, uh, their life cycle in quite an incredible way. So sometimes when we watch these sci-fi movies and you know the, the person's been around for however many hundreds of years, what do you think about that? I'm not so keen on it personally. But what about the potential downside? Unfortunately, the sign of Taurus can be about land. So I feel that the seizure of territory, which we know has happened in the last six months, but we've seen it also in the last two years. We have got China, it seems, chomping on the bit to seize Taiwan. And the imposition of dogmatic autocratic controls, which reduce freedoms, which is really interesting because, of course, these two players are very much about freedoms, is really very strong. And I think sudden, unthought out moves internationally, because Jupiter uh, governs international affairs, definitely possible. And despite what's happened with the Food Standards Agency in America, I feel that light touch supervision and regulation are likely to become more of the norm in the short term. And therefore, we're going to see more things get into the food chain, which are not good for us. Uh, another concept that came up also to do with food retail is we're getting these stores now where there's no staff, there's no checkouts. You just walk in, pick the stuff up, totally uh, digital, the whole environment. Jupiter rules trade, Uranus innovation. But what a soulless experience. You know, it's... Is this the way we want to go? What I love about the Germans, they're much stronger on regulation in terms of staff welfare, uh, and they're not allowing those stores to open on a Sunday, even though the staff aren't working in them necessarily. So I think that's really good. Um, because here in the UK, staff rights in terms and conditions just been totally eroded over recent years uh, since Sunday opening began and this is where trade often gets its way in at the end so that's what we need to collectively become much more conscious of and find the ways in which we can express our power peacefully and constructively the control of data now how many people say do you know i keep getting these adverts come up on my phone for uh, a new pair of shoes how how did my phone know about that? So this stuff's already ongoing. It's terrible. But the control of data is going to get greater. The removal of cash from society, that's something we all need to push back against because that means the control technologically is even more upon us. So we lose our agency. So very important that we support cash the most we can. Now, hyper surveillance particularly through things like CCTV. Uh, there's a big controversy going on in Britain. There's a Chinese company that manufactures a lot of CCTV equipment. And, you know, this gives them more and more penetration. It's not a case of East v West. It's the management of that country. It's not the citizens, it's the management. So this is not an anti-Chinese sentiment. It's because we've got a very autocratic government and so their desire to uh, to find out more about us or have more control so for example they're exporting electronic cars into the uk but all the technology behind that 
they have the ability to seize control. And what about driverless cars, lorries and trains? Ah, I think it's dreadful. The potential for the depopulation of the workforce is not something that I think is going to be good for person kind because I feel providing services to people or working hard gives us a sense of identity and purpose. So all those things are quite concerning. They're all there at the moment. And so it's down to good regulation, uh, which I feel AI needs, um, or it's down to the pursuit of control for nefarious means. Um, and that is really, we need to be aware that we have a series of very autocratic states, whether it is Russia, Iran, uh, North Korea, whether it is China. You know, we've got Brazil and India and South Africa all like to work with those players because they feel the Western world has not shown them enough respect and you've got to have a lot of understanding for where they're coming from. They dislike imperialism. But of course they're being groomed. Everyone's being groomed by someone. And we have to kind of see beyond the grooming to see what it's all about. So, so many consumer goods are produced in China now and everyone's very dependent on cheap stuff and nothing's made in our home countries, well, not anywhere near as much as it used to be 25, 30 years ago. This makes us more and more dependent on them, just like we were dependent on Russia for oil and gas. So those are just a few things. There are so many ways in which society can change in a very positive way, I must stress that. Um, and it all depends on will. For example, the democratic process could change so it becomes less tribal and it becomes more based on proper democracy. So we can have proportional representation rather than the, the, the binary systems that we have in the States and the UK, which means that there's always a tussle on the extremes rather than trying to find consensus. Consensus would be a great thing to find. Jupiter can be about higher principles. Uranus can be about the higher truth. It can be about how we can connect as people in a very positive and constructive way. And if we can uh, find that dialogue and increase that dialogue as individual citizens, then that's a good thing to push against the might of the big tech companies or the big autocratic states or the lack of listening that politicians have in the Western world. Now, I did mention about the third house, and there you can see it, 2149, house three, but look at Mars. So Mars is in Pisces. Earth carries water elementally. If we think about a river, we have a river bed. The water goes over it. So Mars is about thrust, but it's also in the sign of Pisces about understanding our past experience and knowledge that has been cultivated over a long period of time and using the desire to make things better. So Mars feeds into this event in a major way and it was in a much more destructive way when Uranus first moved into Taurus. So that's a good development. Now I'm just showing the event chart from a solar perspective which puts the guys in Jupiter and Uranus in house two in keeping with Taurus. Mars moves into 12th, um, Mars coming to the end of its cycle. It's moving into Aries on the 30th of April for six weeks and it forges one of the most incredible links of this whole year, uh, a sextile with Pluto, not seen in our lifetime in those two zodiac signs before. So whoosh, really hold on tight because that's going to be very dramatic. So the second house, it is all about those foundations. It is about a need for stability but also an understanding, I feel, that we can't just cling on to how it used to be. So we are going to see some forms of farming that are not necessarily great. Intensive farming, you know, where cattle never go outside, never see the light of day, absolutely disgusting. So the only way we can push back at this within people's available budgets is try to buy local. That's something I passionately believe in. Try to buy local, try to buy off people whose your money goes directly into their pocket, not through a middleman if possible. And that's a great way to support growers and producers, but also to embrace the more natural form of food production. If we celebrate that or we grow our own food, 
Uh, these are great ways that we can work with this energy going forwards. But people are also talking about Bitcoin, what will happen with that. We've seen that cash has really come under massive pressure in recent times. That makes sense, doesn't it? And of course, Bitcoin's come in. Some people are very much into uh, this type of thing. And the likelihood is after all the devaluation with the growth factor of Jupiter, maybe there's going to be a pickup around those. It's not something that I have a particular awareness to. But the concept of change, but knowing that Taurus wants to see value for that change or wants to see uh, tangible outcomes that give us a sense of stability, if we see change that's helpful to us, uh, does create food that's good quality, that's pure and affordable, well that would be a great outcome because at the moment we're seeing a lot of things that aren't very good quality because of that light touch with regulation and I feel Jupiter can be very much to do with that because it can be to do with laws and regulations. So they may resist that kind of regulation but as consumers we need to keep asking for it. And then in terms of uh, Uranus being a very Aquarian influence, I feel that as a collective, as the world is shifting and changing, yes, we may feel it's very much about us as individuals in terms of how we identify sexually or connect in terms of our relationships. And the chances are more unusual and less, uh, less former laic relationships will become more and more the norm, to be honest. If that's something, you know, if you've got more conservative instincts, that may be something that doesn't appeal to you. But the chances are that's just going to become a reality. People are going to become more relaxed, that people have more informal connections to one another. And that will be a reality over the next 14 years. But we need to be conscious of our personal values as well. And that should guide us above all else. And uh, we know that a big very famous politician talked about cleaning the swamp out but we also know that there's so much corruption around you know in so many parts of life and society it's all sickening us it's all poisoning us in a way so if we could with the combination of these two over the next 14 years get to a place of greater a greater decency in terms of the honesty around resources, the honesty around money. For example, if politicians do something and get caught out, why don't they just own up and say, look, I got this wrong? But of course they deflect and you know, deny and all the rest of it. And then it just rumbles on and on. And you know, it's not great. What we want to see is more transparency. So Jupiter and Uranus together could potentially give us that, which especially with uh, Pluto making its way in Aquarius once it gets back there from the 20th of November after the retrograde from the 2nd of September. That's really where we're set fair as I see it. That gives you a bit of a flavour. As I said, such a vast subject. There's going to be lots of different takes. You could argue, for example, that the sign of Taurus uh, could be about the foundation. So it could be about property. So we're going to see a lot of high streets which have become... Uh, deserted really because of the shift of shopping patterns because of in my humble opinion the stupidity of politicians giving too much time and space and power to supermarkets who now have control over us rather like the Chinese um, but those town centres and city centres can be repopulated in new and imaginative ways and you know you see some great stuff people converting shop units into residential and that kind of stuff could be really, really good. And we could see people living in ways which maybe are a little bit informal, but give them a greater sense of affordability, but also security. I'm now going to go through each of the 12 signs from Aries through to Pisces to give you a flavor of what you can expect from the perspective of the ascendant, the sun or the moon. But if you would like to understand what serious astrology can do in your life, if you give me three pieces of personal birth data, I can produce for you your life roadmap report. This will give you searing insights into the patterns that have played out in your life thus far. A bit like that Mars Uranus square that occurred 
all those years ago. That's been playing out ever since. And by understanding these, uh, these influences, we can then go future forwards in a more effective way. In my special package of 30% off, you can also get your 12 months transit, the moving planets in the sky interacting with your unique blueprint. If you understand your natal chart, you understand your transits, why not check out my draconic version? This is your soul karmic chart. It's based on moving the north node to the vernal point, and they're very powerful. It's essentially the energy we bring into the world. It's the roots of our being, whereas the nature chart is the fruit of the roots of that tree. Uh, so understanding our draconic chart can be very different at times from a nature chart. But the same package, again, please see the link below for more. So Aries, over the last six years, there may have been some uncertainty around the, the cost you've encountered. Some things may have been a, a bit up and down, changeable for sure. Jupiter arrived in your second solar house about a year ago, so the two of them coming together could see a bit more stability, I feel, particularly as Jupiter and Venus come together on the 23rd of May in such a fantastically positive way. Uh, check out your monthly horoscope for may by seeing the link beneath this video you can get a flavor of how this uranus jupiter conjunction comes up to a cresting point and then gives you a potential dividend but saturn in your 12th house is kind of competing with the energy of the total solar eclipse in your own sign so part of you wants to march into a bright new future and another part of your situation could see you uh, dealing with the past. It could be coming to terms with some things, perhaps at a more emotional level. But if you are someone who's quite entrepreneurial, this is a very exciting combination for you and could see you developing some very intriguing and uh, very positive uh, schemes and plans in the time to come. Taurus, how have you found Uranus over the last six years? It really mainly depends on where your son or other planets are in the sign of Taurus. If you are from nought degrees up to the 21 degrees of this event, then obviously you probably experience Uranus much more dramatically. If you are later on in Taurus, then it's possible Uranus has felt very 12th housey for you, much more restless feeling, finding it hard to really settle on one thing that uh, fits your purpose. If you have found yourself trying different things and being quite experimental in recent years, that's good because you're a sign that has been a sticker. And if you have been twisting and investigating, that, that's really good. And also Pluto in your ninth house since 2008, that and Uranus have been provoking you to embrace fresh approaches. But when it comes down to it, there may be some core themes in your instincts that do need feeding and one of those can be a sense of security and stability and also doing something that's meaningful for you in terms of your personal identity. So Jupiter combining with Uranus I feel actually can be a really good thing. It wouldn't be a surprise if some Taurus people were retraining at this time, learning new skills, uh, developing different ways of working with the experiences you've gained in recent times, which may have seen quite a lot of change and flux, but now I feel you can start to make a lot more sense of all of that. And a new beginning in a very positive way is possible in the third week of May this year. Please see your monthly horoscope below for May, which will give you a lot more insights into that. Gem and I have said it quite a few times that the last few years may have been quite challenging with Uranus in the 12th house. The 12th house is psychology. Uranus is an electric energy. Your sign rules the nervous system, the third house. So Uranus in the 12th means that anxieties and frustrations that are not always obvious may have been impacting on your physicality, the first house. Interesting, it just really depends on your exact natal chart, but I feel Jupiter moving into this era evokes its much more Piscean energy, which is to do with faith, spirituality, which may have become a lot stronger for you over the last year anyway. There's so many different faiths that we can uh, invest in, that we can gain from. We're not talking about just traditional religion. 
uh, it could be healing is another area that you've seen real growth and interest in in your situation over the last 12 months and that's an area that you can really uh, bring into your world in a very dynamic way over the next 14 years but also you've got a cluster of energy coming into your sign at the end of end of may which is quite sensational please check out your in-depth monthly video you can click on the link underneath this video to do so. So Cancer, the sign of Taurus shares a kinship with your sign because the moon rises in Taurus, it's exalted there. It's the second best place for the moon to be after your sign. So you appreciate the stability that Taurus often has. And for you, it's very much about friendships. But your friendships have probably been a little bit how to skelter in recent years. Maybe some people have moved on Maybe it's been your choice, maybe it's been theirs. Maybe your interests have changed. You may have felt like you've wanted to detach yourself from some people. Other people have come into your world and the people you've really liked are probably people who are very authentic. People who are actually quite challenging in some ways. Um, perhaps challenge you in, in some of your instincts, but somehow or another you know this direction of travel is actually good for you. So with Jupiter, appending to Uranus, those people who have a, a big world view, who may be a much more aware of politics, who um, are very much conscious of society as imposed to, to a more uh, inward, protective uh, and uh, security-led approach, which, you know, can be a more Cancerian instinct. So a bigger picture is being painted and you know with Pluto going through the seventh house that's been another area that maybe has seen some tensions or changes around relationships. So over the next 14 years through to when this event occurs in your sign there are going to be some exciting people manifesting in your world but also you can be right at the heart of some very important uh, group activities and be quite an influence too. To find out why May itself can be particularly lucky for you, do check out your in-depth May monthly forecast by clicking on the link beneath this video. The OU can be a tad traditional. It's not necessarily obvious because you can promote a very uh, regal uh, vibe which you know people can really respect. But there's part of you that does gain comfort from stability in the things you know. You're a fixed sign, just like Taurus. So Uranus being razzle-dazzling around the last six years may have seen some changes about how you earn a living or seen you unsure or changeable around your approach. You may have become much more outspoken against people you see as being dominating in a negative way, or perhaps you've cut a thrust and defined yourself more uniquely in your world role. With Jupiter cresting with Uranus, it's a great time to start a new business, to uh, apply for a new job, to start a new enterprise. This is your time to elevate your profile, but perhaps by having more confidence to be different, not necessarily wanting to charm and persuade in the way you can but by following convention now's the time for you to take on convention if you have the confidence to do that something very special can happen in may please check out your deep dive may monthly forecast underneath this one and i will explain why virgo uranus has been pushing you to do different things but certainly to break out maybe travel go to places that are very very different follow interests which are a bit more provocative there is of course that part of your nature that loves to help people provide services you also like a certain pattern and structure to your world but if that, that at times has become a little bit too metronomic the role of uranus is is been exciting what jupiter does because it rules the ninth house which is where uranus is for you is bring it brings its gifts in terms of widening your horizons exploring travel, different cultures, philosophy, history, doing more research, just wanting to bring into your world more fresh air, more spontaneity, uh, more 
desire to be a bit more of a free spirit and that's really playing out through this event. There's also something quite magical that can happen for you in May. If you watch your in-depth monthly forecast for May by clicking on the link below, I will share what it is. So Libra, Uranus has been in your eighth house. That's really complex in a way because the eighth house is where we're very devoted, but it's also got a flavor of Scorpio, which is where Uranus is exalted. But of course, Uranus in Taurus is in its fall. If you found business or earning money a little bit unpredictable and a hard, a hard hoe in recent years, not really a surprise. Then again, you may have brought some really different ideas and approaches to your business or financial interests, which have paid off really well for you. If you have been doing a lot of uh, pioneering stuff and haven't felt that you've really got the rewards yet, Jupiter could bring those through for you. But Jupiter, in comparative terms, is coming to the end of its time in the sign of Taurus. But there is going to be something happening in May, which is really important for you, and it does feature your ruling planet. To check out exactly what it is and get a wider perspective of this event, please watch your in-depth May monthly horoscope by clicking on the link beneath this video. Scorpio, Uranus has been in your seventh house. What's been going on for you the last six years? You could, if you're mainly single, have had quite a few connections, which may have been very hot at times, but because your traditional ruler Mars was squaring up with Uranus at the start of the process, it's also possibly seen a time of instability around relationships. So as much as we can dramatize the fun and frivolity that can happen from electric connections that make our pulse race, if it's disturbed your home and, and emotional life in a way which has been quite challenging, I don't expect that's always been a bag of laughs. However, Jupiter applying does bring the potential for fortune. Jupiter in the seventh house. It's actually going to connect in a much more significant way in the month following this one in May, when it forges a quite beautiful link with Venus. That's one of the luckiest combinations in astrology, but it's in the part of your situation to do with relationships. Perhaps Uranus has actually separated you from something that actually wasn't working very well for, for you. If you were going through uh, or were in a relationship, whether it's a professional tie, a, co a connection to a job, even a relationship with you know, who you bank with, who you shop with, if those things have broken down in some way and changed, that probably in terms of the big picture is for a reason, because things have become stale. And that part of you that does like a degree of stability, just like Taurus, uh, because you're a fixed sign, has been confronted. So you've been pushed in the way, as well as perhaps you've made some sudden uh, changes yourself. So Jupiter meeting up with Uranus, I think for you, can be good around relationships. But check out my in-depth May forecast, because that is when things can really get good for you. Please see the link beneath this video for more. So Sagittarius, Uranus in your sixth house. Oh, how has it been, eh? Particularly with Pluto in the second, for most of the time it's been there, the last six years, it's probably felt that your nervous system has been frazzled. Sleep may have been difficult. Getting any kind of pattern going may have been difficult. The part of you that's a free spirit has been further challenged by Saturn in your fourth house the last year. So all of it has felt probably quite trying at times. But what Uranus has been doing in a way is pushing you to try to find the role that gives you the mental stimulation you like, uh, and yet uh, feeds, feeds you literally by providing the money through a job. But uh, if you have been doing something that does seem like you're going through the motions, the fact your ruler is applying to this, I think all the things that you've gone through over the last six years can start to make sense. A new job could suddenly occur for you uh, things can still further change for you in times ahead, but that's only because part of your nature is to constantly be searching for something that really switches you on. 
you know, that you're not just going through the mundane emotions and patterns of things. So in a way, Uranus has been serving you, even if it seemed like it was actually a right pain. So some kind of rewards come into you. That reward will become much more obvious in May. Please check out your in-depth monthly forecast by clicking on the link beneath this video, and I'll tell you why. Now, Capricorn, if you're someone who really does like things to be pretty steady eddy, um, you're very much in keeping with the characteristics of your ruler Saturn. Uranus in the fifth house may have seen your love life be a little bit unpredictable, little being not the operative word. Yes, it may have been quite exciting at times, but frustrating if things have changed a lot and you don't quite know where you are with this. But Jupiter coming along, Jupiter brings hope, it brings faith, it brings possibility. Also, if you've upgraded your thinking and your approach and also taken your talents and skills and flair more seriously and showcased them in a much more confident way, your rewards are about to come. Please check out your May in-depth monthly video by clicking on the link below and I'll share how the outcome of this aspect is going to play out for you quite soon. So Aquarius, Uranus moved into the fourth solar house in mid-May 2018. The chances are there may have been some big changes around the family dynamics in your situation since then, where you live or how you live there. Um, obviously I've moved uh, three times since then. We hope now that we can become a little bit more settled where we are, but it's been a helter-skelter time. The position of Uranus in the fourth house, in a way, pushes what is the authenticity of your emotional life. If it isn't authentic, it kind of needs to change. Uranus can create space, um, but it also can create a more provocative energy, and because Mars was in the mix, if your son, like mine, right at the start of Aquarius, the chances are you wouldn't have been in the mood to hear what other people said if you didn't think it was fair or true for any longer. So there may have been some quite tasty exchanges. If you're born later in Aquarius, that may not have been quite so obvious, but certainly uh, a lot of changes around home, emotion and family, but maybe a lot of information because Uranus can be great for downloading extra knowledge a lot of extra information about your emotional workings and then Jupiter applying brings in even more potential for knowledge, but also can see you moving towards some kind of uptick and that uptick can occur in May. If you check out your in-depth monthly forecast for May for Aquarius, please see the link below. I'll tell you exactly how. So Pisces, Uranus being in your third house has electrified you over the last few years. Perhaps you've actually had a few, I hope, minor electric shocks. You certainly had some brilliant ideas. There may have been times when you've woken up bolt upright in the middle of the night and thought, blimey O'Reilly, yes, I need to do this. And if you are someone who's a tech entrepreneur, loves coding, publishing your own uh, stories on your blog, uh, you're really interested in engaging with social media, it's been a lively old time. But of course, during that time, and from the beginning of that time, Mars was just on the edge of your 12th house. So there may have also been quite a few things that have come into the open, informations that weren't necessarily easy to be on the end of. So that third house energy may have seen you keeping a little bit more of a distance in some ways, perhaps connecting with some different types of people, but not always consistently. Maybe there's been spells of a lot of concentrated interaction and then a need to withdraw. Jupiter, your ruler, moving on to the position of Uranus, can give you a little bit more confidence about connecting to others, but you're going to really feel a lot more confident when we get through to May. If you check out your deep dive forecast for May by clicking on the link beneath this video, I'll explain to you the bigger picture of this because You've gone through a lot, particularly with Saturn in your sign for the last year, and there is an opportunity to reap a reward. Please join me for that. 55% of people who watch my videos don't 
or haven't subscribed. If you're one of them, please consider pressing that sub button and also clicking or tapping the bell notification symbol. It gives us an opportunity to grow the channel and your support would be mightily appreciated. Take care, good luck and goodbye.